Now. All right, well, we're going to get started. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. This is a wonderful crowd. Kudos to Alex for drawing such a, a wonderful crowd in here on a lovely Tuesday evening. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming. Uh, excited to hear, hopefully, a, a pretty exciting, wonderful story. I'm assuming kind of perfect timing to be in the right place at the right time to, yeah. to get to accomplish what he did. I'm not going to go too much into it because that's what he's here for. Um, but again, Alex Saunders been a long time active and ever's customer, so it's wonder, wonderful to watch him grow uh, and, and accomplish some pretty amazing things. And for those of you who follow him on any of the social media platforms, pretty amazing photographer and, and doing some pretty pretty unique stuff outside of the climbing world, but uh, obviously an accomplished climber and not the first person. Excited to have him here tonight. So without further ado, let Alex take it away. Uh, and, uh, yeah. That's what we'll do at the very end. So, yeah, I have been shopping with Active since they were over at the over at the other place over down on 35th Street, I think it was. And I bought all my gear to climb uh, Rainier when I was 13 for the first time. Back from Active Endeavor. Uh, it was 17 years ago. Uh, all right, so end of day one on half dome. Um, it had been. It was about six o'clock before we we actually got to start climbing on the route. We were hoping to start climbing around noon, but the approach to get to it was all messed up and gnarly. We couldn't. It just took a lot longer to get there than we thought we than we thought it would. And so at the top of pitch two, horrible spot to stay. Horrible spot to set up the portal edge. Uh, as you can see right here, this is the portal edge. This is the one that we used on Half Dome. Uh, so they're designed to be set up against a flat wall, maybe a little overhung, maybe a little less than, but the spot where we were uh, was kind of in a, in a constriction and one wall was uh, the only wall that we had to be able to hang the thing from. There was one bolt and it was kind of sitting like this. So the ledge is sticking off like so. Well, the problem with that is when you're, when there's two people in it, you know, you're sleeping, maybe you toss and turn a little bit, it eventually starts to kind of go like this. And then, uh, then around, you know, midnight or so, if you, you know, you got a couple hours of horrible sleep, the thing just kind of, you know, flips over. <laughs> and it dumps you out of your poor ledge. And, uh, and then you're, so you're hanging on with one arm, and you got your sleeping bag here, you're trying to, Kicked and yelling at your friend for he was obviously the one that did it. It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, and so then you got to take your take your sleeping bag off and you got to kind of hold on to it. You don't want to drop it, right? Then you then you get outside from everything. And you, you guys have to work together, set the portal edge up right. And you get back in, and you adjust all the straps. Good to go. Good to go. So you know after you know after a couple more hours, if it ends up dumping you again, that's when you decide, you know, maybe we should do something different here. <laughs> uh, and now it's two in the morning and we're extremely tired. We don't, uh, don't really have another option. So we end up just, you know, adjusting everything right and we decide to just cuddle real close and, uh, and don't move, don't breathe, don't do anything. Uh, so that was how we made it through only having the portal edge dump us twice that night. Uh, and we were able to, you know, sleep until about six in the morning and, and start climbing for the rest of the day. But, uh, so now I got you guys warmed up a little bit. Let's talk about Half Dome. What Half Dome is and where it is. Uh, this is a picture of it here. And Half Dome is in Yosemite National Park. It's one of the, uh, it's, one of the, it goes back and forth between Yosemite and Yellowstone as the most popular national park in the country. Uh, it's the first national park. This is the one that uh, John Muir and Ansel Adams worked together with their, with, uh, and got Roosevelt to come out across the country to, to set up the first national park. Uh, it's a 26 hour drive from Iowa, if you're into driving that far. Or what most people do, you can fly into San Fran, 
and it's about a three and a half hour drive to get to the valley. Uh, Yosemite itself is about the same square mileage as Rhode Island. So it's a very large place. The valley is, uh, that's where all the climbing is, well, I mean, it's climbing all over, but that's where your the famous climbing is with Half Dome and El Cap and uh, Lost Arrow Spire, all those fun ones. Uh, you can see here, this is, this is kind of what the road looks like when you come into Yosemite Valley. Uh, you come down right here, and that's, uh, this is where you go and get that awesome photo that you may or may not have seen. If you type in Yosemite on Google, you get this picture of these huge cliffs on either side, and these 2,000 foot waterfalls pouring off either side, and you look all the way down and half to them at the end. So, Go all the way down, half domes at the far end here. Uh, and Camp 4 right here is the, this is the famous uh, place where all the dirtbag rock climbers hang out. You got that reputation because it's the only walk in campground in the valley. Uh, all the other places you can reserve a campsite, you know, and they, they have one for the RV or you can, they have spots. Uh, in Half Dome Village, where you can rent these these cool tent things that are you know they're just canvas side tents with, uh, with essentially a deck, you know, just the wood floors. Uh, but Camp Four is where you go. You just walk in, and if there's two of you, um, you're going to be rooming with other people. They have a campsite, and there's six people to each campsite, and you don't know who you're going to be with. And and we've been there before. And, and been with you know families who weren't super excited to have some drunk climbers hanging out with them. <laughs> so we've also uh, been there with uh, guys who haven't showered in two months because they're hiking the PCT. The Pacific Crest Trail goes right through Yosemite. Uh, a lot of those guys will you know take a week off from hiking to just hang out in Yosemite Valley. Uh, so as you can see over here. There's this trail, you start at Half Dome Village. This is Half Dome. Uh, and it's a, about eight mile hike. You go all the way up here and go all the way around the Half Dome. Uh, the other approach, the normal approach, is goes up to Death Slab. And you would come up here and then you take a climber's trail straight up this. It's called the Death Slab because it's, you know, not. The safest trail, uh, but uh, in our situation, it was even worse because a whole bunch of rock had just poured down it and knocked over, you know, full-size trees and taken all the ropes out and whatnot. So that wasn't an option for us. We had to hike all the way around. Uh, and then this photo shows the cables group. If you're familiar with that, if you've ever been to Yosemite one of the most popular hikes in the country. Uh, somebody went up there and they have these big cables that go up the side of this thing. It's pretty pretty steep, uh, about like this. And they drilled a bunch of two by fours so you can kind of just walk up in a somewhat safe way. I think only two people have died doing it so far this year, so it's not too bad. Um, <laughs> and that's how so that's how you get to the top if you don't want to come over the face. If you want to climb the face, but you don't want to take the death slab, then you start over here and you walk down this part and you come around to the face. Uh, I got all these from just Google satellite images and there's also nice reviews of, of Half Dome. As you can see here, it's got 4.8 stars, so most people like it. <laughs> so some people give it a uh, one star review. This mountain is half of a dome. I expected a full dome. <laughs> and, uh, uh, no parking and no Sherpas. There you go. Uh, so it was, uh, let's see here, George Anderson was the first person to reach the summit of Half Dome via what is now known as the Cables Route in 1875. Uh, now, the first person to ever climb. Uh, here. So the first person to, uh, well, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Half Dome. This is what it 
looks like when you're looking down the valley from the top of El Capitan. Uh, you can hike up to the top of pretty much any of these cliffs and look off of them if you're, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, half dome's the one over here. Uh, it kind of has a dome shape and it is falling in half. Uh, <laughs> and to get a size reference, uh, so this is El Cap right here. Half dome's in the back. El Cap Pan is 3,200 feet tall. Half dome is 2,200 feet tall. Uh, your Eiffel Tower, 1,000 feet. The Space Needle, also 801 grand, about 600 feet high. And Empire State Building, just under 15. And the Willis Tower in Chicago is about 1,700 feet high. So even with the, with, uh, even the Willis Tower, Half Dome is about 500 feet higher than that. Uh, the interesting thing about Half Dome compared to the other features in Yosemite, uh, since it's this valley, something like El Cap, it starts at the bottom and it's 3,000 feet up. The Half Dome sits at the top of the valley. So when you start climbing, you're, you get this 3,000 feet of exposure from, you know, from 10 feet off the ground. When you're halfway up this thing, it feels like you're 4,000 feet off the ground. Just, it has this little bit different uh, fun thing to it, if you will. Uh, so in 1957, Royal Robbins decided to go out with uh, here, Jerry Gallwalls, I probably pronounced that wrong, and Mike Shearick. And the three of them went up, it took five days, they did this siege tactic uh, style climbing where you know, it's a royal, when you leave the ground, either get to the top or you don't. You're not, you know, uh, some guys are, some guys were into climbing up, putting ropes up, coming down, and then going up and down, up and down. But they, uh, they left the ground, they made it to the top five days later. And in his, in Royal's book, he was quoted to say, if we got stuck, it would take days for rescuers to reach us. A rescue like that had never been attempted for the very good reason that a wall like Half Dome had never been climbed. Uh, Royal also wrote, we feared the enormity of the wall. We dreaded having to reach so deeply within ourselves and might and maybe find ourselves lacking. Uh, we kind of, and I feel like pretty much everybody gets that same feeling the first time they try to climb Half Dome. It's, it's a very intimidating round. Uh, here's another one of the photos and I believe these were taken with a uh, film camera. And you push a button and then it, it gets the camera. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this was, this is about three quarters of the way up, I believe, on Half Dome. Uh, when they reached the summit, there was one person, uh, met them at the top and congratulated them. And it was, at the time, the largest uh, the largest wall ever climbed. It became the first grade six wall in the world. Uh, it kind of set a new precedent for rock climbing. Uh, so, Half Dome is a special mountain to me. When I was eight years old, I had never gone on a real vacation before. I grew up in Chicago and my grandma lived in Indianola so the biggest vacation we ever took was driving from flat Chicago to flat Iowa to go see grandma and back and forth. Uh, when we were eight, we moved uh, back here so we could be with my dad's family. And he decided we were gonna go hiking in Yosemite. So I didn't exactly know what that meant, but uh, I know that he bought me a cool tent. I'd never seen a tent before, but he bought me one. He said that we're gonna have to take this thing and we're gonna hike with it for a while and we're gonna spend the night in it. It sounded amazing. Set it up in the basement and uh, yeah, 
I was a little too afraid to put it outside just yet. I was eight, so we set it up in the basement. I think I slept in it for like a week before we went on this trip. And just, I, I didn't know what to expect, but from never really having left Iowa and driving straight to Yosemite, because my dad doesn't stop, he doesn't, you know, here. You're, you're peeing at the rest stop. The gas is for gas stations. Nobody's going inside. Nobody can get any snacks. We bought stuff at the grocery store. Eat what we brought. And uh, we go, go, go. And I'm still that way. It works out well. And I'm kind of bag style now. Uh, so we drove all the way straight to Yosemite and we get there. And it's mind boggling to me how huge these walls are. Yeah, I, you know, I walked around downtown Chicago before and looked up at the at the buildings. And you, you couldn't see the tops of these buildings, but but this is not man-made. This is uh, you know this is Mother Nature and it's even bigger and cooler and you know the two thousand foot tall waterfalls, some of the wa largest waterfalls in the or the largest waterfall in the lower forty eight states and one of the top five largest waterfalls in the world, I believe. It's just, it's mesmerizing. Uh, so our big goal, we're gonna hike up the cables route on half way. So uh, there's a spot where you can stop about halfway, it's called Little Yosemite Valley, you know, you have permits and all that fun stuff. And you hike up, uh, so what we did is we hiked our stuff up to Little Yosemite Valley, we set up the tent and then the next day, we're going to go for the summit, right? We're going to, you know, it's going to be amazing. And, I, and I'm just jumping around. I'm so excited. I can't, uh, can't control myself. And we get to the bottom of the cables route, and there's all these gloves here. You know, there's a big pile of gloves. People have brought up, and then we're done with them. And, they're, and so you can borrow these things. And there's this big line of people to get up to the top of this thing. And, and I'm just having a blast. And we finally get to the top of Half Dome. And it's so huge that even though you're on the eastern side of California, there's nothing in the way. You can, on a clear day, you can see the ocean from the top of this thing. You're at 8,000 feet in elevation at the top of Half Dome. Uh, it is, it, you can not only look down the valley and see all those mountains and all the walls over there, but you, you can see the full Sierras in every direction, and you're, uh, it's, it's breathtaking, uh, for lack of a better term. But while I was up there, we're having lunch, we're hanging out, and all of a sudden, I hear this, this noise, this, some, some metal hitting on metal, right? And some dude comes up over the top of this thing, <laughs> comes up over the front of it, now I'm, <laughs> what is this? And I run out to the edge, and there's this thing that sticks off the very top of it up here. Right there. It's called a visor. And it sticks straight out from the top of this thing. I run out, I lay down, I stick my head over the edge. Oh, man, like now the exposure is even more real. Like I'm just looking down, and I look over, and there's this guy coming up, and there's, there's somebody else with a rope attached to him coming up. And at this point, my mom is screaming, Alex, <laughs> Alex, get out of me, get out of me, come, come back, come back. You know, and, and she's too afraid to actually get to the end. <laughs> she's kind of back. Come on, come on, come on. And so finally I walk back, and what, what is this? What is going on here? And those are rock climbers. And in, in, a, in a lot of these places you go to, you can see the climbers on the walls, but Yosemite is so huge that the, the people just disappear. I mean, you need a telescope to see them. So all of a sudden, I see this guy come up over the base of this route, or this mountain, and it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And I looked at my mom and I said, that's what I'm doing for the rest of my life. I'm gonna be a rock climber. Uh, and so that's what I started to do. We, uh, so when you're eight years old, you live in Iowa. The, the best way to become a really good rock climber, first you gotta get a subscription to, to Climbing Magazine. 
because there is there's nowhere to climb in Iowa. And then, uh, then you wait for Brian Block to go screw a bunch of plywood inside inside of his grandpa's old barn and stick some poles onto it, and uh, which then became started as B&B Mountaineering and then turned into Walnut, which is the old gym in Kelly, Iowa, just south of Ames. You climbed at that. Uh, they convince, you know, they you, you run into people like Peter and you start climbing with them. And, uh, and then just keep going and building on it. Then once uh, Climb Iowa came around, uh, I was about 21, and then it grew this community. It grew this community of people. Uh, I was able to, to meet friends and, and go climb with people and, and advance my knowledge. And I always, you know, I always knew I wanted to go back. And then uh, after I'd done a few walls, I had, uh, the first one I ever did with uh, Pete right here was Space Shot, a uh, very fun experience. And then we, uh, we climbed, I climbed uh, Moonlight twice, once with Hana here. And then uh, we had tried and failed at a few others as well. Uh, it's all part of it. But uh, a friend of mine, Matt Leavenworth, uh, and I decided, you know, I, I decided I wanted to climb Half Dome when I was 28 years old. I climbed the first, I went to the top of it the first time when I was eight. I'm going to climb it again when I'm 28. And so we made this, uh, so we started making plans. You know, early, early January 2015, started making plans. We're going to go there end of August, early September. We're going to spend a couple weeks out there. We're going to climb half of them. It's going to be awesome. Then in July of 2015, uh, we started getting emails from people. So it's saying, hey, uh, do you hear about this, about this rock fall? Weren't you, weren't you going to go climb half them? And yeah, yeah, we started reading about it. Started reading about it. It was uh, a big old section of this wall just fell off in the middle of the night. There was a storm. Nobody knew about it. Nobody heard about it. They, uh, some two guys went up there to go climb the route, got there, looked around, and said, I think, I think something's missing. <laughs> so this is, it, that yellow piece is the piece that fell off. It was, it was uh, equal to about uh, two and a half tennis courts or a football field worth of rock, five foot thick, just fell off the side of this thing. Uh, so it used to it used to look like this. When you got to that section of rock, you went up, uh, it's called uh, the chimney. You just walk across this ledge here, and then you went up this chimney, and there was about two inches of uh, somewhat easy climbing. And there was also a variation. You could go off to the side and do, uh, you know, harder climbing if you're into that, you know, hard free climbing type of thing. Uh, but then after half the, or after this thing fell, it looked like this. So it just erased it. And you know, Matt calls me up. And says, well, what are we gonna do, dude? What's you know, what's the plan? No, oh, no big deal. And it's a trade route. It, it's Northwest regular on half dome. People climb that, you know, before this, you know, three, four parties will climb that every day. Like that's, it's the second most popular route in the world, right? Other than the nose on half dome, right? This is, or the nose on El Cap, I'm sorry. Uh, the Northwest regular route on half dome. Somebody's got to go up there and fix it. There's no big deal. We got two months, it'll be fixed, no problem. So we start listening. Start, you know, uh, looking on the websites and, and uh, asking people. And then we hear a party's going up. One of the search and rescue guys, one of the, you know, these, these full on badass dudes here. Uh, and, and another guy who puts up first ascents in Yosemite. They're going to go up there. They're going to put it back together. Sweet. Two days later, uh, they got up there. They put in some bolts. They couldn't make it. Ran out of time. Oh well, that's that's not promising, but whatever. Uh, so then a few other parties go up and they and they try too, and they all say the same thing: we ran out of time. 
And then uh, there one more party I was I was pretty excited about. Uh, I believe his name is Josh Renning. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that wrong. He's gonna be mad. But his name is Josh. Him and his buddy. They they put a first ascent all over the Sierras. Their their whole thing is to just disappear in the backcountry and go climb. You know, go climb stuff for five days that nobody's ever heard of. Oh, they got this for sure. Uh, three days later, they came back down. So they ran out of they ran out of supplies. They ran out of stuff. They uh, they put in a few more bolts. They were able to get part of this pendulum done, but they weren't able to put the route back together. Well, now it's August. You know, we're supposed to be driving out here. Uh, so, oh, whatever. There's plenty of other stuff to climb in, in the valley, right? We'll, we'll just go there, we'll climb, we'll hang out, it'll be fine. So we go out and, uh, and we show up at first and we decide to climb uh, uh, the west face of Weedings Pass, which is this one right across the right across the way. All those photos that you've seen and that I've shown so far, people climbing, half dome in the background, come from this route. Uh, the route goes pretty much right up here. That'll be a good warm-up route. It'll take us two days to do it, then it'll be a blast. Uh, and then we can stare at half dome, and we're up there for a while. You know, the, the main thing that all the magazines and whatnot were worrying about was you know, there could be more rock fall. There could, there could be little pieces of stuff falling. You know, even if there's just a loose thing the size of a basketball, you know, that'll hurt. You don't want to get hit by that. Uh, so you know, don't go up there. Don't go up there. Don't go up there. So we we climbed this other route, and we didn't see anything falling. We didn't hear anything. You know, we, we were two miles away, but we didn't hear anything. <laughs> so, uh, uh, then we go down, we get done with that, we go down to Camp 4, and there's this weird vibe in Camp 4. Everybody, everybody's talking about Half Dome, and everybody's scared of Half Dome, and, and they're talking about the, the rock fall or whatever, and so we decide, I can't stay here. This is screwing up my body. So I meet some, I meet some uh, people and become friends with them that, that live or that live and work in Yosemite, and they let us stay on their on the floor of their tent. Right? They, the people who work like in the cafeteria and whatnot, uh, you know, they live in these canvas tent things, the wood floors. So yeah, come stay on our floor. They don't climb. They don't know anything about it. So they're totally like fine with you know, not telling us that we're insane. Uh, <laughs> so this was this is Matt on. Uh, on uh, Washington column here, uh, and that's me on Washington column. There's this big, there's this big ledge it's called Dinner Ledge, and you can spread out. You can take, you know, it's, it's probably six out twenty foot in diameter in circle, maybe, and uh, you can take your harness off and walk around if you're bold enough. But uh, you know, we're just. We didn't bring much for sleeping bags, so we got to use something to warm ourselves up. That's a good point. So after after staring at this thing for a while, I decide, you know what? I'm not I'm not any better than these other climbers. I'm not any stronger. I'm not any cooler than these guys for sure. But they're all complaining about how they ran out of time. They ran out of supplies. They ran out of stuff. So I'm saying. Royal did it in five days. Let's bring five days worth of stuff. Uh, sounds fair, right? Uh, let's do it. But the problem with that is you have to bring everything. Five days worth of water for two guys, a gallon of water per person per day. It's 10 gallons. It's 88 pounds. So just with the bag to put the water in and the rope to pull it up, you're looking at 100 pounds. That's before you start your camping gear, your your metal hardware that you need to climb with, with, with all that other stuff, you're already at 100 pounds. So we had to go as light as possible with everything else. Uh, we had the bag about 160 pounds. And a friend of mine mentioned, uh, before the desk slabs was a thing, uh, a buddy of mine said, 
you know, the best way to get your deer up half dome, he told me this two, three years back, and I thought he was crazy, why would anybody do it? Turns out it's because you're bringing a bunch of stuff. Uh, you can hire pack mules to take supplies up to Middle Yosemite Valley. Uh, so we put about 100 pounds of gear on pack mule and had them take it up. So, oh man, it's eight miles and uh, and you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure Little Yosemite Valley is like almost there. We didn't, we didn't look it up at all. Uh, so we have them hike all this stuff up, and then, and then on day one, we started our, we started our uh, climb, right? Or we started the approach to the climb. Turns out, Little Yosemite Valley is only halfway. It's only like four miles. So, yeah. We were able to get 100 pounds of gear four miles without carrying it, but now we still have to go four miles from there up and down and around, and, and it was not easy hiking in Little Yosemite Valley. So we ended up doing three separate trips back and forth uh, called pumping loads. You just put as much stuff as you can on your back and hike very, very slowly and very, very uncomfortably, all the way around, drop the stuff, walk back, grab more stuff, turn around, drop it off. Oh, that's why nobody else brought five days worth of travel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's why we got to start at 6 p.m. instead of noon, like we had, like we had planned. So this is what's called a topo. Uh, this is, uh, if you're, Climbing a mountain, if you're doing this style of rock climbing, this is your map. Uh, and we see these numbers here, and I'll maybe you can't see them, but these circles have numbers in them. One, two, three, four, those are your pitches. And then it'll tell you, you know, if this is about 150 feet, this is 100. It'll tell you about how, uh, how far you have to go between sections. And the way it works is you, the, the first person climbs up, they get to an anchor about 150, you know, they're normally about 150 feet, uh, and you stop, and then the second person comes up, and you, you're putting in all this protection, you're, all these, these cams and whatnot while you're climbing, and then the second person comes up behind you, and you belay them up, the whole, um, just like you belay somebody if you're at the climbing gym or whatnot. Uh, and they clean all the stuff out. And they bring the rope up. And then you also have this giant bag, in this case, that you have to then pull up behind you. So you're not climbing with 150 pounds on you, but you are pulling this bag up behind you the whole time. And then you go, you just do it in sections. And it's hard, and it takes a long time, and uh, adds, a little, adds a little flavor to rock climbing, if you will. Uh, so the section that was missing is uh, right here, that pitch 11. So you had to get up to here as fast as you could, and then hopefully we wouldn't run out of supplies while trying to get to here. So this is, this is the spot where nobody had made it months nobody had gotten before uh, so we were able to stop you know pitch two on day one and then we made it to pitch nine which was right here so just below the section of everything missing uh, for to spend the night on day two so oh this is a picture of us on or at the ledge on day one or in the morning on day two, with you can see the, the sloping wall on the side there, and the quarter leg is kind of sitting on it. And there's nowhere for me to hang my jet foil to cook food, so you just hold the thing while it boils water, and then wait, and then pour the food into your little uh, dehydrated meal bag thing, and, and start climbing. And that's after you just Correct. Yeah. Uh, 
So partway up that day, this is this is the view of the wall. Uh, kind of intimidating looking. We're still at this point. We still had about 2,000 feet of rock climbing to go. And uh, that that day wasn't uh, wasn't super eventful. It, uh, the climbing in that section is is relatively easy compared to all the rest of the climbing, and we were able to get through it pretty well. We were able to stop and set up for the night, and this time we were able to get a nice spot to put our portal edge uh, against a flat surface. No, no uh, worry about it flipping over that time. But we did have an interesting experience on the portal edge where you know, we had all of our food divided up. We knew exactly, we only brought enough calories for the entire thing. There, there was no extra food. We had 1,200 calories a day per person for five days. Uh, you know, not exactly enough, but we definitely didn't have anything to spare, if you will. Well, day two, this is right before, right before we're gonna go for it, we brought uh, I, I can't remember the brand. It was one of those backpacker meal things. Pizza. <laughs> oh, we're excited. <laughs> so, pizza. so I never had pizza before. My thought was it was going to be, you know, maybe those like little things from a from where the yeah from a lunchable. <laughs> maybe it's going to be like, well, I don't know what's got to be in here. That'll be fun. Open it up, and I got a package of powder. Package of dried cheese and a package of, of dried uh, sauce. How are we supposed to do this powder? <laughs> so we look at the back and it says to start, add water to the powder and then bake over a fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like any other backpacker meal I've ever had. You only have to soak the thing up and pour some water in there and you're good to go. So bake over, okay. So that's not really an option. Uh, well, let's try and see what it's like without baking it. So we pour some water in there. It's gross. <laughs> uh, so then we, we pour some water in the, in the cheese and we pour some water in the sauce. And, and the cheese isn't horrible, the sauce isn't horrible, but the main calories are in that, they're in the bread, right? And so we put the cheese and the, and the sauce together and try eating that. And I, oh, okay, this isn't bad, but we need the calories in here. We can't just eat this. So I come up with this bright idea. Well, let's pour the sauce in there. Maybe it'll add some flavor to it. It's not. <laughs> it makes it worse. And it turns this like clumpy green brown color. Oh my God. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever uh, cleaned the diapers of an infant before, but uh, the last thing you think when you're doing it is, hmm, I eat that. <laughs> so then we, uh, so we try to eat it because we need the calories, right? And, and then once we get to the point where we're about to vomit, we're like, well, that's going to be counterproductive. So we <laughs> can't do it. So we, we got to live off of, uh, I think, like a little over 600 calories a week that day. Uh, we're good to go. So uh, that night, we, we slept pretty well. And you know we, we got to hang out. It's, it's pretty sunny at this point where right before the sun went down so we set our jackets you know hanging up off of here so that we could hide under there get away from the shade and then we were able to uh, sip a little whiskey and, and watch the sun go down set over set over uh, El Cap it was a pretty nice evening uh, you know texting texting Peter telling him how we're doing and whatnot uh, so the next day after we woke up, it was uh, it was time to go. We're we're gonna try we're gonna try the pitch. So the previous people had gone up and they and they put some bolts in to get us past the, the blank section. The idea is that that 
variation that was there before was this harder crack. Uh, Got to get to that. So what you have to do is climb, climb a bolt ladder. So it's just they take. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been to a climbing gym or something, but just they drill a hole in the rock and then they stick a essentially a concrete bolt, the concrete anchor in there, and it has a little thing hanging off of it. So you can clip a carabiner or two and you pull on that. And the idea is you go up pretty high, then you have to do what's called a pendulum. Where so I'm here and the where I need to be is over here. And once I get there, you get lower down and then you just, you know, run back and forth really fast. Uh, dangling from the rope and then try to grab that section, pull yourself up. Right? Uh, you're only a thousand feet off the ground. Uh, no big deal. Just your body. And so the with this route, the other the other hurdle was your uh, your moving over. So you you can't fit the whole thing just straight up. But the idea of this is this is the first part, and then this is the second part. This this section here is just on top, right? But once you get to here, you move over about two, three hundred feet on the on the face of the wall. So once you do that, when you come back down, you can't get back to the old route. So you you're pretty much committed, or you're going to have to go down the face in off into the abyss. There's no map for how to get down from there. So you have to go down, stop, find a spot, put in a bunch of your gear, and you have to leave it to propel all the way down. That might cost you a thousand dollars worth of gear to get down. And it's possible you run out of gear and you won't be able to make it down. Uh, you, you just don't know. So we decided we're not going to pull the haul bag over unless I can get into that chimney. We know that we need to get over into this chimney and you know it, it's one thing if I can't get over there but there's still a rope going back to here I can get back to here we can set up camp again and we can you know figure something out the next day whatever. Uh, we have you know we're only on day three we got enough supplies for another uh, you know, it's the beginning of day three, so we have enough supplies for another two and a half days. Uh, so we take off on a, or I take off on the pitch. And this is the first section we go across. And then right after here, uh, you can see I start to get lower down. I'm doing the pendulum. As soon as I do that pendulum, I'm going around a corner. I can't see Matt anymore. I can't see the guy belaying me. And we can maybe talk to each other, yell real loud, but in situations like that, you, you set up commands. And you know, if, if I pull on the rope in a certain way, it means one thing. If he, you know, and then he responds by pulling on the rope again in another way. Uh, and you really just have to trust your partner at this point. So I go, I do the pendulum, and I'm able to get into this other crack system. And start climbing that system and then get up. Uh, and so this is this is the crack system. It's on this is what's called a dihedral. There's a flat spot here. Then the wall juts out. So we're over here, the wall then juts out about five feet and then it goes flat. And then the the spot that we're trying to get into the chimney that's about 15, 20 feet over there. Well, on this route, you used to be able to go up, and then there's a bolt there that you could clip, and you could kind of lower down and just get over into that chimney. Because the, you know, the chimney kind of went like this, but the chimney's not there anymore. Now the spot that we're trying to get to is pretty much dead even. The bottom of that chimney is dead even with where that bolt is. So. You, you can't, when you're doing a pendulum, you're running back and forth like this. You can't, you know, run up the wall. You can just run kind of 
side to side like a swing. Well, I'm doing everything that I can to try to get over there, to try to do this. But with this rock, you know, with it flat and then sticking out three feet and then being flat again, I'm having to hang off this bolt and I'm running as fast as I can and trying to time it so I can jump over this three foot thing and then keep running, which isn't working at all. I'm hitting my shins, I'm all bloody, and, it's, and it hurts. And, uh, and after about four or five hours of trying everything that I could think of, uh, I decided now I gotta do something different. So I look up and I can see a set of two bolts, which is called an anchor, about 30 feet above me. And if I could get to those, maybe, maybe then I'd be high enough to be able to do that pinch work, get over there. So I start climbing, and the, the climbing to get there is, is super thin. So you have to do what's called eight climbing. Uh, eight climbing is where you're, the, the basic form of eight climbing is you're just taking your normal protection, like your cams and, and nuts and whatnot, stick them in the crack and pull them off. But when the crack gets super thin, you can't do that anymore. So you use things like this, it's called the cam hook. It's this little hook. You don't just stick it on something. Oh, it's so thin, you put it into a crack and then it sits there like that and you pull on it and it just kind of tilts. And that's what holds it in there. Uh, or you use uh, things like this. It's like a little mini ice axe. Yeah, the crack's real thin and you stick it in there and then it kind of holds, hopefully, I guess. <laughs> and I had never actually, I, I had carried this stuff with me on, it, on pretty much every wall I'd ever climbed on. But I had never tried to use it before. Like I, I read the book, you know, like I understood <laughs> the principle behind it. But I had never actually done it. And turns out it's scary. Um, so I, I'm about, uh, uh, I think I was, I, I had one of these and then I was I was standing, you know, I, I got another another piece about about 10 feet, or about five feet higher than that. I was able to put one of these in, the smaller version. This is actually the big one. They make, they make small ones, but it wouldn't be a very good demonstration because you couldn't see it. Uh, so I get the real small one in, uh, and then the, and I, there's a bolt. I can, I can almost get to this bolt, but it's, you know, if, if I'm stepping as high as I can, so I have this thing at my ankle, and I'm pulling on a, on a little edge over here. I'm still two feet away from it. Now, I just read Royal Robin's Advanced Rock Craft book, and in there he suggested uh, if you can't quite reach something, you can take two nuts, which are these metal wire things, and you can kind of weave them together and make this little uh, cheater stick, essentially. And I start I do that, I get some tape out, I come up with some weird clever thing. And uh, these things make a little bit of noise when they're in there. So I had just put one of these in and I get up as high as I can. You have two, uh, you, you clip the rope to it and then you clip this little ladder to it, which you, these things that are hanging off me here, these little ladders, you clip to that and you climb up that. Well, in doing so, I put one here, and then I put another carabiner right here. And I start to step on it, and I'm going up, and then all of a sudden I hear this, snap! And, and I immediately just, woo! <laughs> just scream like a little girl. Oh man, it was horrible. Turns out it was just the carabiners rotating weight inside me, and it sounded just like a piece was pulling out. I thought, that piece is going to go, and then the two, three other ones below me are going to pull out. I'm going to take a 20-foot, like, I, I, I don't have the patience for this. Uh, I was able to get up to that, uh, I was 
was able to get up to that spot where, where that anchor was. I clipped it. I said, all right, Matt, you got to lower me so I can do it. You're out of rope. What? You're out of rope, dude. Or, so we're using ropes that are about 230 feet long. Just, there's, there's no more rope. I can't lower you anymore. So I'm looking around. And, well, I'm pretty sure I can get from here to there. But I need more rope, right? So I said, all right. Uh, well, then off the way, man. Come on up. It's all right. He's excited. He's excited. <laughs> Just remember, I told him I wasn't going to bring him up unless, unless I'm done, right? <laughs> so, and he can't see me. I'm around the way. So he's, oh, man. He's, uh, I get to come up. He's done it. This is, this is exciting. <laughs> but the way I had done it, it was, you know, it was this horrible mangled thing. So the guy seconding, coming up, I mean, it took him a long time to, to clean all the gear and get past it. It took him about an hour and a half or so to get up to me. I had a bag up there and whatnot. And he gets up there, he's looking around. Are we supposed to be over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're supposed to be right over there. I thought we weren't pulling the bag up unless we were over there. I said, Dude, I got it. We got a plan. It's okay. What's your plan? All right. So what I want you to do, I'm gonna lower. You're gonna lower me down. So I was out of rope. I couldn't do this. You're gonna lower me down, and then I'm gonna tension traverse out around this thing. Then I'm gonna take a rope. And I'm going to put a carabiner on the end of it and one of these hook dealies. I'm going to throw it at that crack and it's going to get stuck. <laughs> and then I'm going to pull on it. He says, yeah, 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 yeah. So what's the actual plan? <laughs> that's my plan, dude. That's what I got. Uh, and he says, no, dude, that's not. No, what, what are you talking about? Like, hey. I was reading Royal Robin's book, and in the book it had a section about rope throw techniques. And it said, if you can throw a rope to get past the plank section instead of placing a bowl, then it is of the finest style. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Well, Matt's, uh, Matt and I make a good team, because that's what I told him. He's all right, dude. Let's do it. Let's let's get it going. Yeah. So we start, and he lowers me down. I get over there. Sure enough, I put I put a carabiner on the rope, and I can see in that chimney there's the old the old anchor for like where people used to go. Like we're <coughs> almost there. It's 15, 20 feet away. And there's a bunch of old cord hanging off of it. Got one of those hook things on there. It's definitely gonna get stuck somehow, some way. I'm gonna catch something. So I get over there, I throw the rope, boom. First try, miss, horrible. <laughs> I try another five times. And after about 20 minutes, he said, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, I got this, bro, I got this. And then all of a sudden, it's stuck. I start pulling. Dude, I think it worked. I think it stuck. No way, dude. I start pulling. Give me a little slack, dude. I think I got it. I think I got it. No freaking way, man. <laughs> and sure enough, I pull on it and I get up there and boom, we made it past that section. <laughs> Off the way, Matt. Come on over, bro. We did it. And he, oh, we are so excited, so right, just ecstatic. And now, you know, we started this pitch at sunrise, I don't know, seven in the morning or something. And now it's like six at night probably, seven at night. So we made it 200 feet in a day, you know, awesome. <laughs> and he gets in, oh dude, I am so excited. Like we've, we've done it, we've, we've put the route back together. So, yeah, I mean, kind of. <laughs> Nobody's been to this section in two months, but you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get your hopes up too much or nothing. But remember, nobody's been above us. There might be there might be stuff missing above us too. Like we got two days. We gotta. We can't waste it. Like we we gotta keep going because 
what if there's more stuff gone? What if there's more stuff missing? So we kept going, and this is what it looked like from when we were pulling the hall bag out. Oh, you can't see it at all. Uh, <laughs> this is what the bottom of that chimney looked like when we were, uh, when we were coming up, and then we had to do about two more pitches of chimney climbing, which, uh, you know, the wall is only about three feet apart, so chimney climbing is essentially you're just pushing again, like you're in a doorway or something. You're pushing against the two sides and wiggling your way up. Uh, it's not hard necessarily, but it is, uh, it's very thought provoking, if you will, because you can't place any gear when you're climbing stuff like this. You can't place anything to protect you. If you fall, it's going to hurt. But it's easy enough, so you're not going to fall, right? You got it. So that day, we were able to get to about another, I think, two, three pitches out. We made it to the top of pitch 16 that night. And we were able to set up a ledge, or set up the portal edge and make camp. And, and man, was this a good camp. Because this one had about a foot ledge that stuck out from the wall. And then you could set the portal edge up just below them. So that meant you could have the portal ledge hanging out, then you could put your stuff on this other thing. Super cush, super cush. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it looked like with me sleeping in there. Uh, we're about uh, 1,700 feet off the ground at this point, and another 3,000 feet to the valley floor, so I'm gonna say 3,500 feet of exposure below us. Uh, and I'm not sure what the deal is, but Matt really likes to sleep on the inside. Uh, and he makes me sleep on the outside. I don't know. Uh, but and this was this was the climbing that we had to go uh, the last day. So we think there's only about five pitches left. As long as nothing's missing, as long as nothing's wrong, we got this. Then we have to do a section called lightning cracks. And then you can start to see this visor that I told you about earlier. This thing actually sticks out from the top of the wall about 100 feet. And Royal Robbins talks about it in his, uh, in his book, about how every, these, these cracks keep pushing them closer and closer to this visor. And they have no idea how they're going to be able to climb out a 100 foot long overhang. Uh, but you just got to keep going, keep going, and so this is, you know, this is us, or I think I was leading this pitch, uh, and then this is, this is what it looks like from the top of that pitch, looking down, uh, right before you get to what's called Thank God Ledge. <laughs> so once you get to about pitch 18, there's this ledge that sticks out. You might be familiar with this photo. Uh, Jimmy Chen, one of my favorite photographers, took this photo of Alex Honnold when he was free soloing this route. This was before the rock fall. Alex Honnold went up there and climbed this entire thing without a rope. Uh, and he, so thank God ledge is this eight inch wide ledge that's about 100 feet long and it gets you over to the side around that overhang. So they call it Thank God Ledge because thank God it's here or we're going to have to climb that overhang. Right? <laughs> so you can just walk across with your back to the wall, essentially. Uh, and when, when you do, you look down and the whole route is below you. Right? You're, if, if you can stand up there, if you can look down at it, it's one of the, one of the most magical experiences of your life. But we're not that cool. So this is how normal people do it. You, you get out about two feet, and you think you gotta do it, and then you go, oh no, 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 <laughs> then you get all the way across the uh, across the ledge, and then 
And then it's only about a uh, hundred feet of easy climbing to the top. We were able to make it to the summit on uh, at the end of the fourth night. We were able to summit right at sunset. Uh, had the whole top of half dome to ourselves. Everybody else had gone down the cables room, uh, and it was it was pretty amazing. We, we, we were very emotional, uh, you know, we were hugging, we were crying, we were having a great time. Uh, but then then all you have to do now is, is take your 150 pounds worth of gear, down the cables route, and hike out eight miles. No big deal. <laughs> so we divide the gear up, and I, and I get the big haul bag, and we go down, we get to the, the base of the cables thing, and this big, Cables route is again just two cables with some plywood drilled into the wall, uh, and I'm having to do it backwards because the haul bag's so big. I'm going down this thing backwards with my headlamp on because it's nighttime now. And we get to the bottom, I take the bag off, rest for a second, and I look at the bag and I realize I forgot one of my ropes. <coughs> Dude. Somebody's got to go back up there and get the rope. And, uh, maybe not. Maybe we just don't care about the rope that much. Uh, maybe we should leave it. But at that point, I mean, if you leave gear, it's trash, right? And that's rude to just leave trash up there. Also, I just bought that rope, and they're really expensive. <laughs> so <laughs> take the bag off, pick up some of those gloves that are at the bottom of the thing, and in the it's freaking dark, and I just take back off of this stupid cable shroud, <laughs> go get my rope, go back down, and we're able to make it to pretty much the base of, of where the rock part is and the start of the, the trail. And we, uh, and we may or may not have camped out there uh, because you're, you're not supposed to camp out there, so we probably didn't. But, uh, so wherever it was that we decided to stop for the night, we, we were able to turn the haul bag upside down and dig around and find all the food that we could that was left. And, uh, you know, we should have a feast, right? We, we're, we got a day's worth of stuff left. So we start digging around and we find two packets of oatmeal, a package of honey, and one of those little circular things of cream cheese that you get at the gas station. <laughs> I think they don't have to be refrigerated. Because I hope not, because they've been, been in the bottom of my haul bag for five days. Uh, so then we fight over who gets to eat the cream cheese for a while, and we decide to cut it in half, and we split the 80 calorie cream cheese packet. We both got our own oatmeal thing, and, uh, and then we were able to hike out the next day and made it back to the car. So car to car, did in, uh, in five days, we were able to put the whole route back together. And this is a photo of us at the valley, or in the valley floor with half dome in the background. It was in uh, uh, rock and ice and outside online uh, after we did the, you know, after we did it. And, kind of attribute our success to a really, uh, we had just enough skill to be able to do it, but we were just stupid enough to try it. <laughs> if, if, if we were any better, we would have known that it wasn't a good idea and we probably wouldn't have done it. But we weren't any good, so we just went for it anyway. Uh, and we were able to make it. So uh, yeah, that's my presentation. and uh, and. Shameless plug, I am a photographer and I do video and stuff. If you want to see any of my fun pictures, alexsaunders.com has all sorts of fun stuff there. Uh, and like this one here, that's Pete, who's right there, climbing in Utah. Uh, all sorts of fun stuff like that on my website. So. If anybody has any questions, if you're willing to answer questions, anybody has questions, please fire away. Sure. 
I, I, I got this fella on my Facebook Live. His name is Matt Leavenworth. Yeah. <laughs> Claims he had to sleep on the outside earlier when the ledge kept falling out from under it. <laughs> oh. oh, I had to take the outside from there. All right.
after waking up the next day from the chimney thing, where we uh, after we had made it through the chimney and we had, you know, we, we woke up the next day and we were feeling pretty confident and, and everything looked secure from there. We thought, you know, this is, this is probably going to happen. It's actually, yeah. I, I got a question online here. It says, um, what's your next goal for climbing? Uh, well, I'm going out to Yosemite later this year, and I'm going to try to climb a route on El Capitan called Zodiac. It's a, it's a really hard uh, aid route, and uh, for some reason, I enjoy scaring myself. So I'm going to go see if I have what it takes to do that. experience Yosemite. You, you can't see any of the other people. You're all by yourself. You're just, uh, yeah, especially on Half Dome, since you're above it, the, there's not as much wind noise. Uh, and yeah, it's, you, feel, you feel very small. You know, you're just on the side of this thing and, and very, very relaxing, very humbling. Trying to emulate the first ascensionist by by not going back to the ground to, to sleep after going to the second pitch, or did you just already uh, haul your stuff up we there? We just already had our stuff up there. We we're really tired. <laughs> <laughs> so normally, when you when you do something like that, you climb the first two pitches and you're only 200 feet off the ground, so you go back to the ground and you sleep. But all of our stuff was in the hall bag and. Uh, it, it, was, it was so late, I just didn't want to. It was just sitting <laughs> right there. Which then you did it in royal style. Yeah, you know, I did it. Round up, yeah. It was, yeah. We tried to try to do it as true to form as we could. <laughs>